I want to uh, title the message. I don't usually title messages, but I want to title this one, You Can Make It. Turn to someone and say, you're going to make it. Tell somebody else, you're going to make it. Be an encourager this morning. You're going to make it. You see, the truth is, is that many of us have gone through different experiences in our lives when we're out of control and everything seems to be falling around us. And we sit back and we wonder, am I going to make it? Can I make it through this situation? Can, am I going to be okay? How many of you ever wondered, are you going to be okay? Listen now, I don't care. If you, if you haven't, that means you're young. You'll grow up someday. And you're going to come across this moment in your life when you thought everything was going perfect, you had everything in your pocket, everything was good, and then all of a sudden, it feels like somebody pulled the rug out from under your feet, and you're wondering, am I going to make it through this situation? Am I going to be okay? Is everything going to work out? My heart is broken. My life is a disaster. I don't understand. God, am I going to make it? And today, I've got good news for you. You're going to be all right. Tell somebody you're going to be all right. Today I want to teach you about the generous power of God. You see, if you're born again, you're not some little wimpish Christianette that walks around with his tail between his legs because he needs a crutch. But you're a son and daughter of the Most High God. You are, come on now, you are God's favorite child. Turn to someone and say, I'm God's favorite. That's right. You're God's favorite child. Man, he said, I'm going to move heaven and earth to make sure that you can be part of my family. You see, today you are not a survivor. Today you are more than an overcomer. Today you're not just barely making it by, but baby, you're going to go over the top. And no matter how hot hell seems to be, I want you to know we got the Holy Ghost who's a great extinguisher. And he's going to put out the fiery darts of the enemy by the shield of faith and the sword of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. That's right. That's on your paper. Finally, well, that's an interesting term, isn't it? Now, when you go to church and you hear a preacher preach, you got to be careful because we like at least three finallys. They call it three closings. Well, my, my last statement is, and then they go on for another 20 minutes. But God's not like that. He said, finally. And he's, that, he's trying to draw us attention. He's trying to say, listen, pay attention here. Finally. This is it. In fact, the Greek is, this is the period at the end of the sentence. The period at the end of the sentence says this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see, We've all gone through this, and at times we've thought we've, we've been in control, and we're okay. But man, the one thing you'll learn the older you get, I should say, the one thing you'll learn the more mature you become is the less you actually have in control. Can I hear an amen? Man, young people, are they are invincible. They are unconquerable. They are people that, that cannot be killed. They cannot be snuffed. They are going to go. Oh, listen, but the older you get, you realize, whoa. Yeah. Can I hear at least two amens? Amen. Now, if you're young, can I hear an amen? amen. Because you help fuel us. Amen. Yes. But after you think you've got all this thing in your pocket, all of a sudden you realize, listen, you can't heal the wing of a fly. Man, you can't make something happen even if you want to. This is out of control. My goodness, what's going to happen? And the moment you feel all cocky and all, I got this thing. You know, everything's perfect now. Hey, I'm, I'm in control of this. All of a sudden, it starts spiraling, and, and then different emotions start to rush. Fear comes in your life. Intimidation over the situation. And then we start dealing with desperation, and, and then an overwhelming sadness comes over us. And you see, we've all experienced that over our life because we are not in control. This is why serving God is the most brilliant thing you can do. If you're born again, say amen. amen. Turn to the person who said amen. If they didn't, don't. But turn to the person next to you and say, you are a brilliant individual. The difference between somebody being born again and someone not being born again it's not just that you go to heaven, because how many of you realize you're not in heaven yet? But 
that heaven is in you. The kingdom of God is within you is what the word of God declares. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you is what the word of God declares. It's the reality that you and I are not weak, but that we are strong. And many people look at the believers, they look at Christians as these weak individuals that need some spiritual help to get through real life problems. But listen, I'm here to tell you, you're an absolute fool, for the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But God is on your side when you're a part of his family. And when you're part of his family, you got a big, big daddy who's very, very, very strong. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Turn to somebody and say, you're going to make it. You see, making it is important because we all get to that desperate place. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not that there's a tunnel. There's a light because Jesus is the light of the world. Come on now. He is our light. He is our bread. He is our food. He is everything. And when you fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, you're going to make it. Can I hear an amen? amen? Strength has nothing to do with physical appearance. You know that gentleman today, he's big. He's big. Big guy. We had a... Uh, Six men, back, oh my goodness, how many years ago was this? It was back when we were in our other building. One day I took six men from the church. They were all six foot five and more. One guy was six foot nine. And I stood in the middle of them. Do you know you couldn't see me? You could only see my feet. And my feet are small. I only got eight and a half, so I know that's small. But I got eight and a half feet. You know, these guys, some of their shoes were bigger than my head. But many times we look at people who are, oh, and they're strong. Listen, it doesn't matter how physically strong you are. When these kind of situations come in your life, I've watched the most best-built buff boys fall into a corner and cry like a little girl. Well, why? Because it has nothing to do with our external strength. It has to do with the strength that's within you. And this is the part about being a believer that is so powerful. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see, who is the spirit of God? He is God by his spirit. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they are three yet. Three yet. Listen, if you have not yet joined rock solid faith, you need to join rock solid faith. Next step one. Everybody shout next steps. Next step. Shout it one more time. Next steps. Next, step. next steps one. You all need to join next steps one. Why? Because you got to know what you believe. And the fact is, is that many people don't know what they believe. And yes, they've accepted Jesus. They love the Lord. But they're absolutely ignorant. And the problem with ignorance is that it's not bliss. The problem with ignorance is that when you need help that comes from above, but you don't know that help's supposed to come from above, then you're not looking above. So you're having to deal with it in your own strength. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. We, many people in this room got saved late in life. What do we mean by that? You've been, you got born again after 20, 30 years, 50 years living in the world. You, you've had to learn how to survive yourself. You had to learn how to lean upon what the Bible calls the arm of flesh. But you never learned how to rely upon God. You never learned that to get your strength, it does not come from outside. It comes from inside. You never learned how to allow that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead to actually manifest through you. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me in the life that I now live in the flesh. I live according to the faith of the Son of God. <gasps> I did have somebody once say, I can't come back to your church. And I said, well, why? They said, because you don't breathe. <laughs> what I love about my daddy in heaven is that he's all powerful. Yeah. He's all knowing. Yeah. And there's nothing impossible for him. Yeah. Now, listen, if you're just religious, that's just a nice little statement. But when you know God, you can look at every situation and know that my God is bigger than that situation. My God is bigger than that problem. My God cannot be overcome or overwhelmed. My God is the one who is and is to come. It's time to recognize that you're not serving weak, but he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there's no one before him. There's no one beside him. And there's nothing he can't do. Now turn to someone and say, I'm, I'm his favorite kid. 
Finally, that's that period. Bam. This is where it is right here. Finally. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word strong there doesn't mean... The word strong there means enabled. It takes it out of our capabilities. It takes it out of our, our own mindset. It takes it out of what we can do in the flesh. Listen now, you know you've stepped out of the might of God when you've got to conjure up your own way to make something happen. You know you stepped outside of faith and into the flesh when you've got to help God do his thing. See, in many people, we live this. We've lived this our whole lives. We've lived this so that we've got to help God. Poor God. You know, he's poor in his power. He's poor in his strength. He's poor in his finances. That poor God. You know, that poor God, he's up there. Hopefully he can help me, but if he can't, oh well, poor God. Our minds have been twisted by religion to believe that he's just up there. Maybe he hears you or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's helpful or maybe he won't. But I'm here to tell you the word of the Lord is true. And that those who call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Not just from their sin, but from every situation that comes down the pike. My God is able. And not just able, but willing. How do we know that? Remember that man who was leprous in Matthew chapter 8? He came up to Jesus and, and he was a leprous man. He's not supposed to be in public. But yet, he said, Jesus, will you hear me? And Jesus said, I will. You see, the will of God is to touch you. The will of God is to help you. The will of God is to deliver you. The will of God is to prosper you. The will of God is that you walk on this earth as a testimony of heaven and not as a survivor of the earth. But many of us don't realize that because we've never been taught. Be strong, be enabled. Our strength is God's strength, not our strength. Our strength needs to be increased, not something that we can acquire or muster. You see, that's the interesting part. When you've gone from death to life, from the, from the laws of sin and death to the laws of life in Christ Jesus, everything changes. You remember? You've changed kingdoms. Your loyalty, your life was lived in the, in the kingdom of this earth. That means environmental laws. That means gravity. That means all these other laws that are before us. We have to live in them and obey them. But the moment you became born again, you see, this is the difference. The moment you became born again, this is what most churches don't teach, but the Word of God teaches clearly. The, the Word of God declares that you've gone from the kingdom that's being controlled by this world to the kingdom that's controlled by heaven, and that in heaven there's nothing that God won't provide for his children. I want you to know that the Constitution, the Word of God is yea and amen, and what he says is true, and that you and I can rely on it, and the Bible Bible says is so clear and so powerful that you are not alone in survival mode on this planet, but God is on your side. Turn to someone and say, I'm going to make it. God wants to enable you. He wants to enable you to understand his power. The generous power of God is the ability to call those things which are not as though they already are. It's the ability to look at something that is impossible. If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and do not doubt, you shall have what you ask. You see, many believers don't believe that anymore. That's just a nice little cliche. But I'm sick and tired of making the Word of God a cliche. The Word of God is truth, and the truth will make you whole. The truth will set you free. The truth is the Word of God. The truth is above all your facts. And it's time to be people in the might of the Lord to call those things that are coming against you to stand in the power of His might, to stand in the enabling of our God's capabilities. What's the capability of God? There's nothing that you can't do. See, that's why I don't understand Christianity. Man, I wouldn't want to be a Christian in many of these mainline denominational churches. I'd want to be depressed. Well, you know, you got to accept everything as from the Lord. Well, you know, life is hard. And, you know, you just got to make it. Well, you know, I... 
I, I, I'll pray for you. They're not praying for you. Because if they prayed, something would happen. If they understand how to move heaven, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants to bring heaven to earth, and the way he does it is through the power of prayer and in the power of his might. When you understand how to move in the might of God, then you understand how you'll be enabled to say to those mountains that are impossible, it's time to get out of my way. It's time for God to move. It's time for God to change. It's time for God to shake. It's time for God to deliver. And he's more than just able he's willing turn to someone and say you're going to make it I love this the word Lord literally means supreme authority some of you got hell all over your life right now everything that could go wrong is going wrong and you're submitting to it you're allowing it to rule your life. You're allowing it to rule your thoughts. You're allowing it to motivate you. It actually is making decisions for you. You're treating it as the supreme authority in your life. But it's time to look trouble in the eye and remind it that listen, you're not greater than my God. I don't care how big you are. I don't care what the problem is. I don't care how important it might be even to some, this one thing I know, that God is able to change the reality into true reality, which is heaven to earth. See, until we, you and I recognize this, then we're always in that survival mode. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the supreme authority, and in the power of his might. The word power there, it means dominion and authority. The word might means capabilities. I love it. I'm going to read it to you with all the, with all the Greek, all made it so you and I can better understand. Be enabled by the supernatural authority and in the dominion of his capabilities. What is God able to do? What is God able to do? What is God able to do? Nope. You don't believe it. I said, what is God able to do? What are God's capabilities? He said, let there be and there. There's nothing that he cannot accomplish. But many of us walk around with our shoulders slumped. Well, you know, I'm a believer. And I'm hoping he comes back really soon because my life stinks. <laughs> Everything is falling apart on my life. It's falling apart because you're not standing in the capabilities of heaven. You're seeing something else as the authority greater than your God. Who's the authority? And it's time to get back and fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It's time to start looking up instead of start looking down. It's time to change your view. And it's time to get it back on the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, Paul made a statement. I'm almost done. You can count that with me. That's number one. Paul made a statement. He said this, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When you understand the supernatural capabilities of your God and where God dwells, which is inside of you, that life and death are in the power of your tongue. In fact, this morning I'm in there praying, and I was praying over a certain thing, and the Holy Spirit rebuked me. And he says, why are you speaking death over it? I can't fix it if you don't declare it. I can't fix it if you speak death over it. I, I had to go back and not only ask God to forgive me, but to break off if there were any curses that I released upon it. Because I know that my God is able to do abundantly above all I could even ask or even imagine. My greatest imaginations, God does even greater than that. But you see, God can't do it if we don't work within the power of his might. Because you and I just tether ourselves to what our capabilities are, which, let's be honest, are small. How big is your God? That's the question. 
The question is not how big is God. The question is how big is your God? It's why I love kids praying for things that I need. I find a child. I, I look at him and say, hey, do you believe God? Oh, yeah, I love Jesus. Good. I want you to pray for this. Why? Because they see God as mammoth as he is. They don't doubt. They don't fret. They pray with understanding. I just want you to know this morning, emotionally, there's nothing too difficult for God. Some of you are dealing with enormous amounts of stress. Break a broken heart. You're dealing with your mind. It's just, it's, you, you feel even yourself is becoming unstable. And I want you to know the word of God declares it over you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Turn to someone and say, I got a sound mind. You see, today, if you're going through a difficult time in your physical body, maybe you've heard a bad report from the doctor. I thank God for doctors. They're doing the best that they can. Can I hear an amen? But you see, we have a great physician. His name is Jesus Christ, who in the Bible declares in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that by his stripes you were healed. You see, today, it might look difficult. It might look impossible. Listen now. I know, and I, was, I was praying one day, and the Holy Ghost says, so many people have made cancer bigger than me. They make the word C, that cancer word, more powerful than the J word. And it's time to understand that cancer doesn't hold a candle to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing too difficult for God spiritually. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. Financially, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You're not going down unless you're relying upon your own might. And I don't know, I just think it's intelligent. People say, well, you know, you poor Christians just need that crutch. You know, you need something to lean upon. You know, you're emotionally unstable. I think you're emotionally unstable. <laughs> I think you're crazy. <laughs> I've watched believers deal with death, and I've watched unbelievers deal with death. I'd rather be a believer any day. I've watched believers deal with sickness, and I've watched unbelievers deal with sickness. I'd rather be a believer any day. I've watched people go through financial problems in their, as a believer who are tithers and cedars, and I've watched people who are unbelievers just scrape, scrimp, and barely make it by and always complain. Listen, I saw something on Facebook the other day. My hair went up on the back of my head. We'll move on. Some of you should not be on Facebook. That was free. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> the one thing I know is that no matter what situation you're in, I want you to know that God will not fail, that God will make you successful, that God is more powerful than your problem. You're going to make it, that you are not going down, baby, but you are going up as long as you're looking up and release the power from up. You and I can't do nothing on our own, but with God on our side, there's nothing we can do. And it's time for the believer to be a believer again and make the declaration, I'm not just going to make it by, I'm going over the top in Jesus' name. I'm going to end with this. That's number two. <laughs> Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. That means God don't take naps. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. <laughs> 
I don't know what God you're serving, but I know the God that I serve. I know he's mighty. I know he's powerful. I know he loves me. And I know I'm not a survivor, but I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. And yes, problems will come my way, but when a problem comes, it's time to trouble your trouble instead of letting your trouble trouble you. It's time to look it in the eyes and declare the word of the Lord over it and say, in the name of Jesus, you have no power over me. You have no purpose in my life. I bind you in the name of Jesus and command you to get out. Now listen, I have less than 30 seconds. That's number three. How can you tell whether it's from God or not? Jesus will never use what he delivered you from in your life. He will never use sin against you to try to tempt you or bring a trial in your life. It will never be Jesus. So whenever sin comes, take the power of his might, rebuke it in Jesus' name. He will never use sickness in your life. He will never use sickness in your life. For by his stripes you were healed. Why would he heal you and then put it back on you? And he'll never use poverty in your life. For poverty has never been from God. It was part of the curse. And he became a curse for us who hung on the tree. You and I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We are now sons and daughters. You're not just going to make it, baby. You're going over the top. Can I hear an amen? Turn to somebody and say, you're going over the top. Tell somebody else you're not just making it. Tell them you're going over the top. Today I have a challenge for you. It's time to start moving in the power of his might. The supreme ruler, the supreme authority has everything available for you. And you know, when you start speaking it, you're going to start seeing it. That's the word. The word is so powerful. We went through, two years ago, we went through a whole thing on the power of words as seed. Whatever man sows, that shall he also. You sow death, you get. You sow weakness, you get. You sow doubt, you get death. Today, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe you do not know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior in the room. I've got a God who sent his only son to die just for you.